What's up guys? Today we're starting a new series on the channel. We're going to be doing a career mode within Microsoft Flight Simulator utilizing NeoFly. Now I already recorded one episode and unfortunately it won't be able to be used because I messed up. So our base is in Taylorville, Illinois, which is at KTAS. We flew down to Vidalia, Illinois with one passenger everything went well and i learned a couple of things so I, it was a beneficial flight so now we are in vidalia and i'm currently looking to go to 25 il which is and i don't even know it doesn't say i'm guessing here i could look i guess oh is it over by verdon oh okay West of Verdon. I know where that is then. Cool. So we're going to be going west of Verdon. And we're going to be taking some... I don't even know what this is. What are we taking? Clothes. We're bringing 137 pounds of clothes over there. And it's going to pay us almost $1,500 and give us 10 experience. So we're going to go ahead and grab this. Transporter from dispatch. I see you asked for a cargo mission. The ground crew is waiting for you in the parking to load the crates. So now you're going to hear... The Pilot from dispatch. The cargo door is open and the cargo is being transferred. Super cool, right? You can actually hear them loading onto our plane. But speaking of our plane, I actually... of our plane we are using the jmb vl3 uh fantastic little plane first flight went great uh just i flew. transporter cargo is loaded you can start your mission perfect appreciate you so i actually flew before i even knew this was in the game i flew the got gravel vertigo which is the crazy souped up version of this thing I love it. It's a blast to fly. I actually put autopilot back in it because I think Microsoft recently took it out. So I put it back in. So we're going to go ahead. We're not going to mess around. We're going to jump right in, get the plane going, and get to where we got to go. So I just got to remember we're going to 25 IL with 139 pounds of clothes. So 25 IL, correct? Yes. All right, I will see you guys over in Microsoft. Before we get into the plane, uh, we're going to walk around that this is actually in the future. I was editing this video and realized that I did not do the walk around. So, this is our plane. This is the JMB VL3. Our tail number is November 26 Romeo. We're going to hang on to that tail number for a while. Yeah, this is a uh, very nice plane. Just a quick walk around of it. So yeah, we'll probably be in this one for a while until we can make an upgrade and have enough money to make an upgrade. I wish I held more people, but it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and hop in it and get going and we'll see you guys here in a little bit. Everything's loaded, so now we just gotta get our flight plan put in, get our avionics on, and we're going from here, which is Vidalia, we're gonna make a flight plan, K, E, L, A, oh, let's see, A, enter. And we're going to 25, not 28, 25 I L. Enter. Perfect. Now we're going to make that full screen. And we are going to go ahead and set our fuel and set 
Go ahead and prime our fuel pump. Should be good. And we're going to go ahead and start the plane. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. Well, you know what? Before that, we actually need to get. Pushback. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. Should be good right there. Okay, now let's start the plane. You're good to go. Contact the tower for clearance. Okay, let's try and contact... Kilo Victor Lima Alpha, automated weather observation 1500 Zulu. Wind, 0 Niner Tree at 5. Visibility, Tree. Sky condition, 1,700 feet scattered ceiling, 4,700 feet broken. Temperature, 1,4C, 2.10C, altimeter, 2 Niner Niner Zero. Kilo Victor Lima Alpha Traffic JMB Aviation November 26 Romeo is taxiing to runway tree 6. Kilo Victor Lima Alpha Automated Weather Observation 1500 Zulu. Wind 095 at 5. Visibility tree. Sky condition 1700 feet scattered ceiling 4700 feet broken. Temperature 14C 2989. Kilo Victor Lima Alpha, automated weather observation, 1500 Zulu. Wind, 0 Niner 5 at 5. Visibility, tree. Today. Sky condition, 1700 feet scattered ceiling, 4700 feet broken. Temperature, 14C, 2.10 C, altimeter, 2 Niner 8 Niner. We're just gonna fly direct, direct to Verdun. And Kilo then Victor Lima Alpha, automated weather observation, 1500 Zulu. Wind, 0 Niner 5 at 5. Visibility, tree. Sky condition, 1,700 feet scattered ceiling, 4,700 feet broken. Temperature, 14C, 2.10C, altimeter, 29090. Oh my gosh. Kilo Victor Lima Alpha Traffic JMB Aviation, November 26 Romeo, taking off runway tree, 6 departure to the north. Kilo Victor Lima Alpha, automated weather observation, 1500 Zulu. Wind, 095 at 5. Visibility, tree. Sky condition, 1,700 feet scattered ceiling, 4,700 feet broken. Temperature, 14C, 2.10C, altimeter, 29090. Kilo Victor Lima Alpha, automated weather observation, 1500 Zulu. Wow. Wind, 095. I don't know why it does that. Visibility, it, tree. Sky condition, 1,700 feet scattered ceiling, 4,700 feet broken. Temperature, 14C, 2.10C, altimeter, 29090. Hold on, hold on. Kilo Victor Lima, Alpha, oh, Niner, Flight, oh, Flight. Yeah, I can. Right. Kilo Victor Lima, Alpha, oh, Automated no. Weather Observation, 1500 Zulu. Wind, Kilo Victor Lima, Alpha, Automated Weather Observation, Kilo Victor Lima, Kilo Victor Lima, Kilo Victor Lima, Alpha, Automated Weather Observation, 1500 Zulu. Wind, 0, 9, or 5, at 5. I'm tell you, I'm not going to listen to that the whole time. Sky condition, 1,700 feet scattered ceiling, 4,700 feet broken. I don't, I ain't going to ride one way. It doesn't matter, really. Kilo Victor, Lima, Alpha, this thing is a little rocket ship, I'll tell you that. Wind, 0, 9, or 5, and at 5. And rotate. Visibility, tree. Have a safe journey, pilot. That's some load you have there. Kilo Victor Lima Alpha, automated weather observation, 1500 Zulu. Wind, 0 Niner 5 at 5. Visibility, tree. Sky condition, 1700 feet scattered ceiling, 4700 feet broken. Temperature, 14C, 2.10C, altimeter, 29090. Kilo Victor Lima Alpha, automated weather observation, 1500 Zulu. Oh, thank you. Kansas City Center, JMB Aviation November 26 Romeo is typed JMB Aviation VL 31 miles east of Kilo Victor Lima, Alpha 1100 feet. Request flight following. JMB 
Heavy Deviation November 26 Romeo Kansas City Center. Squawk Tree 251. Squawk Tree 251, JMB Aviation 26 Romeo. Okay, so now. JMB Aviation 26 Romeo radar contact, two miles east of Kilo Victor Lima Alpha, 1,600 feet. A little bit of a rough takeoff, but I think we're on the wrong one runway, but I mean, that's where it took me, so. Roger, JMB, Aviation 26 Romeo. So, ah, uh, the reason I went with Neofly, I don't know if I've talked about this yet. I actually, uh, I recorded a video of this, not the one I was talking about at the beginning. The, I recorded one, started, I started off with their hauler too. And as I was editing that video, it turns out one of the clips was unusable. It kept failing to render, and so when I got finally got rendered out, it still broke. And while I was rendering those out, I was watching videos on NeoFly, because I mentioned in that video that I, I have tried all of the, the type of economy add-ons, at least the ones that involve, that aren't like a virtual airline per se, um, like the, the ones where you just fly and you get... You don't earn money, but you basically earn, like, reputation. I don't know how to explain it. But I like the ones where you earn money, you buy planes, you rank up, that type of thing. And do the type ratings or whatever. Well, anyway, I had mentioned in that video, it's not going to come out, I mentioned that I had never, I had tried Neofly, but I didn't, uh, the, the reason I didn't go with this because it didn't have like the online virtual airline aspect where you could bring your friends in to fly, which I don't, it might, I don't know. I haven't dove, uh, gotten that far into it. I know there's multiplayer where you can like split loads and fly, which is cool. But I started thinking about it. I've only got one buddy that I typically fly with. And for doing YouTube, I just, I think it's better to do this because there's way cooler missions with this so you can do uh you can do what like you can do the passenger or the rescue missions you can do vip guys you can take like a vip people you can do vip helicopter which to be honest i don't know if i'll ever do helicopter Anyway, because I think like I said I started there hauler, and I I still I plan on doing that, possibly like streaming it, and doing the VA stuff and that with my buddy. But for like the videos, it's gonna be I think NeoFly. I just it adds I think it brings a lot more content opportunity. You gotta start from the ground up, which reminds me of the old days when I used to do FS Economy, where you start just renting planes and work your way up. And uh, I, I did FS Economy for, that's what I started with actually back in 2018. I started with X-Plane 11 doing FS Economy. I did that for two or three years. But eventually got to the point where I realized, you know, I opened up, you know, I opened up like a finance company. The, the marketplace is 
uh, all based on the player base. So the planes you buy and sell, you're typically, I would say 85% of the time, you're buying them from actual players. Rather, you buy it on the market, but if you go to the forums, there's people with leasing companies, finance companies, uh, all there's all kinds of different companies out there. You know, there's like pawn ones. There's, but at the end of the day, it ends up all revolving around like plane purchasing. And it's like, okay, and there are FBOs, but to get the good ones, you would have had to start back in 2005 when they started. So essentially all you're ever working towards is keeping, you know, like a finance company running or uh, just buying planes. There's FBOs. I had a small network, but they're all like, you know, little daker airports if you're building them yourself. So, and they are more focused on general aviation. You cannot own an airliner in FS economy, and that is the biggest drawback for me. On top of not being able, to, I mean, it's cool. You know, if someone buys an FBO, it's theirs. That's super cool. <laughs> but they started no five, like I said, so you can't get any of the ones that you might want. looking this freaking weather man how nasty it is talk about you know not being able to see these op it was a perfect day to fly didn't i yeah you can't own airline but there are ways like i was saying you can fly the airliners in fse which is uh, basically they have where you can alias, a, alias a plane or alias, alias. You alias a plane and you can, you know, you can do some trickery with it. Now, you know, me and my buddy, we, we fought for years, so we, we know what it's about. But here recently, because I, I didn't mind, it, you know, flying the business jets, because you could make some seriously good money hauling cargo on the business jets. But... I think like six or seven months ago they nerfed it, nerfed all the business jets into the ground. I was like, well, you're just kind of submitting me never coming back to fly in that again. Just because, I mean, cargo, like the VIP cargo flights were king, man. Hey, you can make crazy money on those VIP cargo flights. But... That's for another day. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll, I'll make some videos on FS Economy and, you know, give some of the tutorials and give my viewpoints on it. I've never done FS Economy in Microsoft ever. Like I said, I was a big X-Plane player, and uh, X, I played X-Plane 11 for, from 18 till probably, uh, I would say, 19 or 20, so about a year. Loved X-Plane. About a year, year and a half, two years, something like that. Well, no, because I was still playing X-Plane 11 after Microsoft Flight Sim came out. Because I had bought Microsoft Flight Sim, and you guys remember at the time of release, this game ran really bad. You could have a NASA computer, and it did not run good. So, and at that time, I had a weaker computer anyway, which is actually now my recording computer. Uh, so, now I've got my... Uh, RTX 3070 and everything, it runs great. And I just realized my landing lights are still on. Turn those off. We're actually making pretty decent time, I think. Yeah. Moving by 137 over the ground. Got about 25, 25 miles to where there. What was I saying?
Oh, I was talking about Microsoft. So, yeah, I got my 3070, so this game runs flawlessly now. And a lot of, you know, if anyone here, your X-Plane fans, and, you know, you're like me right now. As I, I have X-Plane 12. I can't play it. I mean, I love X-Plane. The, the developer, Austin Meyer, the CEO of Laminar, such a down-to-earth guy. And his flight model is on point. I will give him that. But, you know, the game graphically, and I'm talking the aliasing, okay? You, the aliasing is so bad in that game, I can't play it. I mean, the buildings are so jagged. It just takes all the immersion out. And I just, this game looks better right now. If he, you know, implements a better version of aliasing down the road, I will be game because I spent a lot of money on X-Plane. A lot of money. I have a lot of add-on planes for that. So, I hope eventually it will come to the point of, you know, him releasing something to do, fix the aliasing. So, it looks like we got about nine or ten minutes until we're there. Which really ain't too bad. There's a nearly 140 knots. If I go here, where was it? Set up? No, it may have been here. Yeah, wind vector, speed and direction. Oh, we've actually got a little bit of a tailwind. How nice. That almost never happens. This is some nice weather we're having here, huh? Might actually try and go up a little bit. Go up like 3,500 feet. See if we can't get above this cloud. These clouds. There's a flight down, I was sitting about 4,000, and that was, that was pretty good, actually. Yeah, I did ILS last time, and I, I don't think I'm going to do it again, because the whole time it complained to me to go to 9,000 feet. And for 30-some miles, yeah, I'm not going to 9,000 feet. See, 4,000 is about perfect. And we're out of the clouds. I mean, this game even makes Illinois look good, man. But I'm about certain this is Interstate 55 right here. Yeah, this has got to be 55. Going over to Verdon. I'm wondering, I almost wonder if this is the Pawnee exit. It kind of looks like it. I think it is. I think that is a Pawnee exit. So I guess I can give you some of my ideas with this series because since we have to level up uh, I'm gonna be working towards getting my level up and then my big goal I want to buy a Cirrus Vision I love that jet it's probably one of my favorite jets to fly and that's the jet I want to get uh, now naturally I don't think it's gonna be the next plane we buy Next one, I'm probably either going to look like a Beechcraft Baron or a, a G36 Bonanza or Bonanza G36 and get into doing the trading because I've looked online, I've watched videos, like I said I was, and it sounds like trading is a really good way to make money early on. I 
I really do like this plane. Now I wish, I wish I could use the Got Gravel one, man. That thing, if you haven't seen it or used it, do. It is insane. Like the speed we're going now, I could be doing like 300 uh, true air speed over the ground. Like it is wicked fast. And so it's got, a, I think it's got the, the same engine as the TMB or the TBM 930. And this little thing, so it's it's crazy. You can go almost vertical in that thing and climb. It's it's so fun to fly. Now, see, but I think this plane might be really good for like the rescue missions because of its it's being a pretty much a, a short takeoff and landing plane. <laughs> Getting pretty close to the airport now. I don't think I'm going to align myself the runway once we get a little bit. I think I'm going to start descending now. And then we're going to. I'm going to go down to like 14, 1500 feet. Try and get under these clouds a bit. I may have to go down to like 12. And then we're going to basically spot the airport and I'm going to kind of do a pattern into it to get down. To get down and land. This thing, I mean, it's this thing is a piece of cake to hand fly. It really is. See, and I actually have a Class Echo. If you know what that is, uh, I may throw a link in the description below to a video for it or something. Or the maybe the link to where you can get it. But I actually have a Class Echo, like I was saying. And usually I'd be able to control like my vertical speed with it and all that. But right now, my encoder knob on it locked up. So I ordered... Uh, I think an eight pack for like 10 or 15 bucks on Amazon. And I just got to put a new one of those in. The only thing I'll say about this is if you don't, if you, you know, ever buy one or anything, look into it. I mean, they're a super cool, super cool device, but you have to know stuff about like putting a computer together or whatever. Cause you have to, it's, it's, uh, you got those, the, like the toys you buy when you're a kid, some assembly required. This is full assembly required. It comes in pieces. And if you don't know what you're doing, I couldn't recommend you get one. But if you have any, like if you built your computer in like that, it's a piece of cake. And he has a full build video online as well. Guy who makes it. So it, it's a very useful. It basically, it controls, I can control my autopilot, my comms. I can switch like the fuel tank, which I need to do right now. I'm switching it over to my left tank. It tells me my flight info. So I, it's a super useful device. I gotta go. Oh, no wonder. We're, yeah, see, this is where... I need to... Next video, I need to put in where I can... The Garmin... The working title G3000. Aviation, 26 Romeo contact. Kansas City Center on 127 decimal 275. Good day. I'm gonna push myself down right now. Going to 127 decimal 275 JMB Aviation 26 Romeo. Pull back throttle a bit. I think I see the airport in my Garmin. You can see it just barely. I think that's our airport. And I'm seeing the runway. So I kind of want to go out this way. Come off of autopilot. You see that runway? I can't see it. As you can tell, I can't see it on the ground. But I see it there in my Garmin. And again, another reason I love Microsoft is because every one of these Garmins come with this synthetic vision. And it, I, it's a lifesaver. Especially when you're flying VFR. This thing, I tell you what. It sounds like this plane's like missing or something. But I mean, it's kind of cool, you know, it kind of sounds like a 
I don't know, maybe this is how this plane sounds in real life, but to me, I'm like, ah, oh, it kind of sounds a little jank jankety to me. But it's all good. I like it. See, we can kind of see the airport there. About half throttle right now. I can't see it on my garment, so I'm kind of going off of this on what I'm going to decide to make my left turn. This is why I said, like, I'm not super realistic when it comes to the flying. It's just, I do, I just do what I do, pretty much. See, there it is right there on my Garmin. So I'm going to drop a notch of flaps. Drop my gear out. I still can't see it. Oh, there it is, right there. Flaps. Man, that is a small runway. Holy cow. That was a harder landing than we like to see, pilot. Sorry. Alright, buddy. Transporter from dispatch. Clear the runway and taxi to parking. As uh, Cisco Road. No, that's where we park. Cool. We're trying to kind of park like right there. I think that'll do. Heck yeah. Alright, shut the plane off. Transporter. Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Okay, once they say the plane is unloaded, we will go ahead and go over to Neo Fly and see what we made. Transporter from dispatch. Everything seems okay. The customer looks happy. Mission ended. Perfect. Let's see how we did. Ready for engine start. So, let put another, if we go down to our finance. That put another 1500 in the bank. We're now up to 6,126. So we're not doing bad. Uh, expert, the experience bar moved a little bit. When are you earn more experience? Looks like you only earn like 10 per flight on those. There's a one passenger going 45 miles for 1600. That's not bad. That's going back, back to uh, Virginia where we just, or Vidalia where we just came from. Okay. Uh, maybe what we do next time. There's actually two passengers, but unfortunately, we would not be able to fit them both in the plane. We only have one passenger plane. So, that being said, uh, I think that's going to do it for this one, guys. We will see you in the next one. Have a good one.